I'm Evelyn Neal. I founded Sanibel Sea School with Bruce, who is my husband and my partner and uh, the visionary. I'm Evelyn Neal. I founded Sanibel Sea School with my husband Bruce, who's Dot Bruce to you and to many. And uh, we did that in 2005, 2006. And we um, did it because it was a dream to have a school to teach kids about the ocean. Particularly, uh, you, it's easy to find programs to teach teenagers about the ocean, things where they can go abroad or go on a boat or uh, spend a summer uh, doing uh, ocean studies. But when we started, there was nothing for smaller kids. So that's how we started. Why is the ocean so important? The ocean is so important because I think there are very few things that can make us feel calm, at home with ourselves, um, like we're part of something bigger. We feel it, not think it, feel it, right? Um, that uh, a sense of peacefulness, a sense of uh, order or, or even disorder, almost like the oceans match people's moods. Like we see sometimes autistic kids who will uh, sometimes come into Sanibel Sea School and they can feel the waves, the, the rhythm of the waves is very, very soothing to them. And, and other kids, you know, when it's, when it's rolling and you feel the ocean picking up energy, you watch them, they, they pick up energy, they pick that up. Um, and so I tend to think, yeah, the ocean is something everybody should know about with their brains, but I think we intuitively all know about it with our hearts. Um, and I think that that's, that's the part that you can't articulate, but that we all know, we know that. Like, I, I, I know that I can say that and you know what I mean, right? It's pretty intense. Right, I feel sorry for somebody who's never been to the ocean. I think I, I couldn't believe, when we first came here, the reason we started doing underprivileged programs, and, and Bruce might have told this story, but uh, our bus needed maintenance, which required driving it to the other, other side of Fort Myers. Um, and when we get to where bus fixing places are. So when we got the bus to this place, we stopped at a 7-Eleven and we were both wearing Sanibel Sea School shirts. And the girls behind the counter said, um, Sanibel Sea School, what's that? And we said, well, it's out on Sanibel and we teach kids about the ocean. And they started talking to each other. And one of them said, oh, well, I've never been to the ocean. And I, I was shocked. Here was a 20, to 23 year old kid and I said well did you just move here and she said no I've lived here all my life I've never been to the ocean and the other one's like I would never have my kids get in the ocean I said well why would you never have a kid well first of all do you have kids she was like yeah and I was like which was sort of shocking and then I was like well why wouldn't you ever let your kids get in the ocean and she said um, well there's sharks there don't you ever see any movies right and I was like no no it's not it's not dangerous they had never been there. And, you know, they live within 12 miles, maybe 20, 12, 20, somewhere in between, and they've never been to the ocean. The Santa Bell Sea School has taught me that as much as it's all about the ocean, it isn't about the ocean. It's about all these kids. It's about all these families. It's about friendships. It's about... Um, it's to, uh, to me, it's about creating meaning for people in their lives. Um, they create the meaning. The ocean is just the tool. The learning about the ocean, the being in it, the discovery part of Sanibel Sea School creates meaning. <clears throat> you know, for whatever reason, and I understand why it happens because I have kids too, we're all so safe that our kids never go into situations that they don't fully know the outcome of. They never do a science project where they don't know what's supposed to happen at the end of it. They never go someplace that they, don't f they haven't seen a picture of, that they don't fully know the outcome of. And so, to me, every day the ocean is really different if you're exploring it in the smallest possible ways. It's totally different. And they don't know what's going to happen out there every day. And to me, that's um, it's important. It's important to not know something. 
it's important to not know things because um, there's an end to every ounce of knowledge we have about anything. And what, what you want are people who can imagine going further, going past the end. And if we're going to have little minds that want to do that, that can even imagine that, they have to know that there is an end. They have to know that it's not all known and done. I don't know about you, but like when I was a kid and I read things like Out of Africa or adventure books, I was slightly depressed that it had all been discovered and that I would, I would never have the chance myself to go in and see Lake Victoria with flamingos on it for the first time or something like that. I think that these kids have even more of a sense of that than I did. And so it's terrific when they don't know what the outcome is. We built a raft one time and we had no idea if it was going to float. We made it out of um, <laughs> plastic soda bottles. <laughs> the thing weighed, like it had to be lifted by a crane. We had collected, I can't tell you how many soda bottles here on this island we had collected. We had had bins at Bailey's and we said everybody give in and everybody did. We had hundreds of soda bottles and we had no idea if this raft, if this raft was going to float. And when the kids came up and they said, this is going to be great when it floats. And I said, well, how do you know it's going to float? He goes, well, don't you guys know it's going to float? <laughs> I said, well, we don't know it's going to float any more than you know it's going to float. And he was shocked. He's like, that's so cool. You don't even know if it's going to float. And we've been doing this for a week. And I was like, well, we're going to find out, aren't we? <laughs> that's important. I'm a firm believer that, that kids need to have a sense of something really enormous in their lives, something big, something that they're a little tiny speck on. And I think the ocean serves that. I think it is that for all of us, but I think it is that especially for kids. And so to become, to feel part of that is a very fulfilling feeling. I think that's why almost every kid at a certain age wants to be a marine biologist. <clears throat> they want to be on this wonderful, magical thing that changes every day. And, um, and they want to know about it. And they are constantly provided with wonderful, crazy mysteries that either wash up out of it or that they catch or that they dive down and see. And they, um, and they pride themselves on having seen these things. It's one thing to read about a manatee in a book or a dolphin in a book. But it's another to know that if you live on this island, when you drive across the causeway to your left almost every day, you're going to see a pod of dolphin right out there by that manatee buoy because that's where that pod of dolphins hangs out. And if we're lucky enough to look at the ocean every day, and if these kids are even lucky enough to look at it every day for a week, they're going to notice these amazing things that happen in this ocean, some of which are predictable, like those dolphin are always going to be there. Maybe not every single day, but they'll consistently be there. And then some of which are wildly unpredictable. Like one year at Christmas, giant Atlantic cockles rolled up on the beach beautiful, they're about as big as my two hands together. And they rolled up in the waves. This, I can't remember, maybe this was 2007 or 2008. And when you pried it open and you thought there was an animal inside, when you pried it open and you looked inside, there was a little white octopus in every single one of them that year. At Christmas, have, have I seen it again every single year at Christmas? No. But that year at Christmas, Every single Atlantic cockle that, that rolled up had a little white octopus in it. We weren't teaching about octopi that week. We had no idea that was going to happen, but we did teach about octopi that week. That's what, you know, that's what happens. It's pretty cool. As a parent, I think you, what you're looking for for your child is an authentic authenticity, an authenticity that touches them, a learning that is visceral, something that they don't just read in a book and process with their brains, but something that they read, they process in their brains, and that they feel and that they see. That's the best kind of learning there is. And you can't do it for so much. Like, there's no way that you can do that. You know, not everybody can, can access that. 
and we're very lucky that we can for the ocean. We can't all go to a volcano, but if we did, we would feel it. You would feel that. Um, that's what we can do, and, and we should do. And that's why, that's why I think it's really sad that, um, if, that, that field trips are sort of sanitized out of a school experience these days. They're expensive, they're difficult, whatever. Um, so this is, this is a place where we say every day is a field trip. Every day here, uh, they'll get to go in the field and they'll find something. I think for me, the best experiences I've had are with kids who are afraid. Kids who are afraid of the ocean or they're afraid to snorkel, particularly afraid to snorkel, um, where uh, in, in one instance, the kid really was not comfortable in being in water deeper than a foot. So um, I got her to lay on her belly, and we laid with masks on, in a foot of water, like right where the waves break onto the shore. And I can tell you that if you ever lay in a foot of water and look with a mask on, inside all those little grains of sand, right where the water's hitting, you wouldn't believe all that's there, like worms and tiny little crabs. And if you're really looking that small, you're going to see a lot. In fact, it's one of the best places to snorkel in a way. So um, that's where we started, she and I, um, because she wasn't comfortable. And then by the time, you know, she kept coming back weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, now she's, gosh, I don't know, like, she's probably 15 now. But, but now, but, but the, she, was, she became comfortable with snorkeling. And, and there's lots of kids like that that I'll take out and they'll be afraid. And they'll, either the ocean's too big for them. That happens sometimes where it's just, it's one thing to be on top of it and look at it like it's a piece of carpet but it's another to go underneath it and then to see how enormous it actually is down there. Sometimes that's overwhelming and frightening. Um, and then some kids, they just, they're just not comfortable with the gear. Uh, but for me, that, those kids are the ones that I have enjoyed most because I know a lot about biology. I, for years, was an ocean groupie. I thought I would be a marine biologist, but I'm clearly not one. Um, but what I love is um, I love being in it, and I can totally transfer that to other kids. And I can definitely, the other thing I've found is as a woman, as a girl, um, I remember one night in the Keys, these, ki these kids were going to sleep, and they were putting their tents up uh, the evening. They were, getting, they were in their tents, and so you can hear everything in tents, right? So I heard these kids say, hey, did you see Miss Avalon today? Did you see how deep she was when she was free diving? Did you see that? I want to do that one day. And I was like, yes, right? I want them to want to do that. I want them to know they can do that. I look at like somebody like Sylvia Earle, who, who we had the good fortune to interview, and she's a huge hero. She's an amazing woman. Um, and I want these kids to, if I, if I, in any small part, in the smallest part, if I've been a mentor like that, that would be. Why should, why should someone invest in Sanibel Sea School? So, um, that's a good question. Uh, it depends on what you want out of your investment. If you're a return on mission person, if you want to think that your money has made a difference in the world or in, in specific people's lives, then this is a great investment. If you want some sort of like quantified hundreds of thousands of people receiving a message. This isn't that kind of place. But if you want this starfish to matter, you know that story about uh, when all these starfish were stranded on a, on a beach and a kid goes along and he's throwing them back and his grandfather's like, why are you doing that? You can't throw all the starfish back. And he said, I can save this one. If you want to make a difference with, with one on one on one kid, person, family, individual, then this institution at the age it is right now, the type of place it is right now, would be a great place to make a difference. Oh, well, there's so many that are so cute. It's hard not to go for, you know, Bruce calls this charismatic megafauna, big animals that people love like dolphins, deer. So it's, 
otters. They're pretty cute. It's hard not to go for that. But um, I think I think it would have to be a little dusky damselfish because they have a little patch of algae that they farm, their little thing that they grow and they farm. And then they're very protective of that little thing. Um, but they contribute to the whole reef, but they just do it with that little patch of their stuff. I'd like to think that that's kind of garden my little patch <laughs> here. I think, you know, the only thing that, that all you have to do for the ocean is to care about it. You could fish on it, you could surf on it, you can visit it, you can, you can boat on it, you can motorboat on it, you can sailboat on it. I, mean, I think I and Bruce and Sanibel Sea School are very agnostic about the way that you love the ocean. All we want is for you to do that. Because if you do that, you'll care. And it is a thing that we're all gonna have to care about because unfortunately, it's, it transcends all countries, all geographies, all states, all everything. We just have to love it for what it is, the ocean, and for what it gives to us as people. And that's the plan. If we do, we'll take care of it. And it starts early, because <clears throat> if you're afraid of something as a child, you're probably always going to be afraid of it. You have to start loving it early. If you, I truly believe that if you love the ocean, you're being really good to yourself at that moment. When you take time, even when you live here, when you take time to go out to the ocean and just be there for a second with it, you're being very good to yourself. And you know it, too. You feel it. You know it. So I think ocean love is people love.